I am here and I am ready. <laughs> yeah, oh, brother. Such a pleasure to see you every time, man. Such a pleasure. And I know that God always, you know, speaking to you and through you. And, you know, none of us are perfect, but if we make ourselves available to him, he uses us. Isn't that true, brother? And that is absolutely true. And I've got to tell you, um, these these meetings, that, that these Red Room meetings are just... You know, it, it's been such a blessing, you know, and as a matter of fact, Rob, I remember you because the first time I actually performed on a Red Room, you were the uh, moderator and uh, I was with uh, Hector Agosto. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was awesome. That was our, my first time really experiencing that. I got to tell you something. One of the things that I really enjoy about this is that I'm listening to all of these artists and I'm listening to their their songs the lyrics the subjects and it's always inspiring to me because i i get a a feel for what is on the heart of the of the artist the individual who's sharing you know and and and, and many of you are, are worship leaders in church and you know how it is when you, you may hear your pastor say something like you know the worship lines up with the message and that's always a blessing you know so i draw inspiration from each one of the artists, you know, and I was listening to like, for instance, Tony, and um, he was talking about not having a fear, a spirit of fear, you know, in, in some of some of what he was sharing, you know, and I was thinking Second Timothy 1 7, you know, God has not given us the spirit of fear, right, of power of love and discipline. And, and, and that is, in the times that we're living in, we need to be rehearsing these scriptures in our hearts and our minds and carrying Amen. them with us through our days. And um, you now each one of you, you know, and, you know, I got to tell you, Rob was, oh my gosh, you know, there was, that was just a beautiful set, you know, and you know, the, the, the melancholy aspect of things. I mean, you know, the word of God has got melancholy portions and segments in it, you know, things that are, are, are a little darker in tone, you know, I mean, I think about Jeremiah, that poor guy, the things mm. that he dealt with, you know, crying but, prophet. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's right. The crying prophet and, and uh, you know, lamentations, you know, things like that, you know, but th these are things, you know, the, the, the word of God reflects God. It's his word. And there's emotions in them. There, 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 there's emotions that are that are involved in what, you know, and that's one of the things that I really do draw from, you know, I'm going through the book of John right now. And, and I'm t I've been teaching through the book of John. I'm about the, about the 1,000th millionth week I've been in the book of John. I'm in chapter five. You yeah. know how it is when you're doing a series. But, you know, in chapter five, I'm dealing with some really difficult topics in, deal in regards to Jesus in, in the beginning of his ministry and, how, and what he's dealing with, you know, and, and he's dealing with, you know, the, the, the religious rulers of the time, and he's, he's proclaiming who he is and his deity, you know, and there's, there's threats of, of, of death, frankly, right? Okay, you know, chapter five, verse 18, you know, they're trying to figure out how to kill him. Isn't that, there's, there's no other way to put it, you know, it's very straightforward. These guys are trying to figure out how to kill Jesus, but Jesus is, and a great example for us is that he is committed to being obedient to his father, even under the threat of death. But in him, we have our hope. And then that really kind of brings me to where I was, wanted to go tonight, you know, because I, I, I'm serious. I, from each one of, of you guys, I was able to draw things, you know, from you. Um, you know, Brad, you know, the, the, you know, the power of love, you know, and, and, and you know, just all of these things, you know, all, all this stuff is really important today. And the reason why I say today is because we're dealing with some very strange times in this world today. And as a pastor, I have to be mindful. I have to be, I have to be the watchman. I mean, that's what I do all day long. I'm in prayer, I'm in study, but I'm also keeping an eye and looking to the horizon, you know, and getting a view of what's really going on and what I need to be able to share to the people so that our people are prepared. Because we talked about the rapture, for instance, you know, and I thought that that was a great thing to bring up right now. Because if you talk to a lot of theologians, good Bible teaching pastors, there's a lot of things that you're looking at. And you hear it from them, you know, and I've been studying these things, you know, and we're thinking about 
certain signs that you see that should be bringing us hope as a church, as believers. And I really, I, I, and I love to encourage people. I know that there's times when I need to admonish and speak admonishment to the body. And believe me, if you talk to the church members at, at our church here, they're, they're well familiar with that, even before me, <laughs> my pastor, you know, um, who led before me. And, uh, but he, he was good at doing both things, admonishing and strengthening and encouraging. And now is the time to encourage the church because the world, the enemy, the prince, the power of the air would love to kill the church right now. But I must say that right now is not a time where the church needs to be feeling as it's oppressed or something like that, particularly in America. And I say this for a reason. You know, being a missionary, an overseas missionary for many years, um, I learned something about that. Um, there's a statistic about the United States. You know, we all know that the Word of God it does not does not have a prophecy about the United States, and that's fine. It doesn't have to. But what we do know about what has been able to God has been able to do through the United States because of what the United States is what it was founded on is that there's been more missionary efforts launched from the United States into the rest of the world than any other country in history. And this is not something to brag about. It's just, this is a fact that God has used the United States, but right now, this is a very crucial time. And there's so many things that, that, you know, there's tons of scripture that we can draw from and being able to discern what we're dealing with. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of people who don't know how to discern what's really going on in this world. And it's causing fear. It's causing a lack of hope, a little fear and trepidation. I get the phone calls. There are people looking the church up on Google and randomly calling our office, wanting to be baptized, you know, wanting, you know, wanting to speak to the pastor, you know, about what's going, you know, about the things that they see going on. Is this the end? This is, this is what happens in churches. This is what happens in pastors when they're sitting in the office all day and the phone rings. I mean, this, this kind of thing will happen from time to time. But we have a hope. And I know some of the, the, the verses of scripture that I'm going to use tonight as to, to share tonight are going to probably be very familiar to everybody. But we need to be reminded of these things. And I'm not going to go into a lot of very deep stuff or anything like that. But as... Brad mentioned the rapture. We have to really truly be mindful and aware of the fact that there are signs of the things that are going on in the world that are really pointing to that eventual thing. I mean, you know, we know there's a bunch of things that need to happen. And there's a bunch of things that we don't need to see, you know, I mean, the, the, war, the war in Ezekiel 38, we don't, we shouldn't be seeing that, right? We're not going to see the entrance parade of the Antichrist, for instance. According to the word of God, we should be out of here before that, because we are not appointed to wrath. But what we must do is we must initially ground ourselves in the hope that is for us in the word of God, so that we are able to be obedient and effective and for the furtherance of the gospel in these crucial times that we're living in right now. And, you know, I, I, I did want to look at, at 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 4, because I know uh, Brad mentioned um, the rapture out of how it's written in the book of, uh, of Mark. I'm sorry, Matthew, actually, Matthew 24. But I wanted to look at 1 Thessalonians 4. And it's, it's really amazing because what, what Paul is doing here is he's speaking to a group of, uh, it's a church that's somewhat immature and that there are false teachers that have come while his back is turned and he's off uh, elsewhere. There's false teachers have come in and bought fear into the church because of the teaching of the rapture that Paul had already laid the foundation for and taught them. But because of the fact that there are people who had died, they thought that because of the conditions that they're living in, because of all those churches were all under persecution, they thought that the rapture had already come. So it's starting in verse 13 of, ch of chapter four in First Thessalonians, it says, but, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve as the rest who have no hope. 
and the rest of the that have no hope. And think about it, it's unbelievers that don't really have the hope because they have no idea what happens after you die. They don't know where they go. They like to think that they do, but they don't. But let's continue. For we, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive will remain until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep or have died, right, already. And verse 16 continues, for the Lord himself will be, will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air so that we shall all to always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. And I hope that those words comfort us right now because this is the time that, that we're living in where the world is in turmoil. I get texts and I get emails from so many different directions and you, you can't look at the media anymore. You can't look at any news source and, 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 and find truth and know that it's truth that you can rely on. I guess that's been the case for a long time, but even more so now because the enemy is truly at work in the media and throughout all of our, our all of the powers, the rulers that have authority over us as the scripture talks about, right? You know, we know about, about First Peter, Romans 13, all of these things. We pray for our rulers. We pray for those. We're told and we're called to pray for our rulers that have authority over us. And that goes from the, from the local sheriff, the police department, the mayor, the governor, and the president, right? But with all of that, we as the church, we encourage because we know that Christ has already prepared a place for us. So while we're here, we can work. Just like Christ says, you know, in, in John chapter 5, verse 17, my father's working right now, right? And so and I'm working right with him, right? And you you keep on going down a little bit farther. It's talking about, you know, the work that they are doing and the authority that, that the Father has given Jesus to do the things that he's doing, all of that is a benefit for us, the church. So we have him to put our true hope and faith in. And we already know this, right? We already know this, but these are frightening times. And all I want to do is strengthen and encourage the church that God's word is true and his promises are true that he's given us. We don't have to fear, even though it looks awfully frightening out there. Believe me, I've got a daughter. My middle daughter is giving birth to her first child in three months. What a world to raise a child in. But you know, my daughter loves the Lord. Her husband loves the Lord. And they're going to raise that child in the word and the admonishment of the Lord. And we Amen. are just praying for them. And we're encouraged. We're not discouraged about the fact that we see what's going on in the world around us. God is going to take care of those who are his. And I say that particularly so that people understand. And I say, there are those who are his and there are those who are not his. And this is the reason why it's so important for us right now to share the gospel. And, and, and some of us are really good at it. Some of us will stumble over our words and we don't know how. Thank God that God gives us the words when we rely on him and pray and ask him to send somebody to us, give us that assignment. You know, it's that prayer that you, you, you're afraid to pray in the morning when you get up. Lord, send me that person that I'm going to share the gospel with. And some people are going to go, uh, yeah, I, I, I might pray that prayer once or twice, you know, and, and, you know because I understand what you're sharing is more than just love and roses. The gospel includes the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes, Jesus Christ died for our sins. God sent his only begotten son into this world. 
And we understand by what John 14 6 says is that he's the way and the truth and the life. No one can come unto the Father, Father but by him, by Jesus. But he sent that his son into the world so that whosoever, right, puts her faith and her trust in him, believes in him, as it says, will not perish, which means go to hell for an eternity, but have everlasting life in heaven. Basically, what you have to do is you have to get to a person to understand that Romans 23 is talking about them. They're part of that all. And include yourself in it. All have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. And the wages of sin, Romans 6, 23, is death. But the hope is, is that because of the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, that we have that hope, that salvation comes through Jesus. And that's how Romans 6, 23 finishes out. So I just want to encourage all of you here that what you're doing right now honors God, gives God the glory, and encourages each one of us. And it encourages me, honestly. Yeah, I, I, I've been a musician since I was a baby. You know, I, I've, I've always played music. I don't know a time when I did not play music. But in the position that I'm in right now, sometimes I feel like I need somebody to hold my arms up. We had some somebody pass away of uh, COVID-19. One of the pastors, there's three of us here, and then one of the pastor's wives passed away last week. And we're dealing with all of the end-of-life issues, helping the family out and everything. And we know that we rejoice because we know that she's out of pain and suffering and she's home with the Lord. But these are the kind of things that we know are going to occur when we're, and it doesn't, always, it doesn't happen in a, in a convenient time. But in my position, I know that I have to push forward, push on. You know, I'm praying for and I'm speaking to and encouraging and uh, those who, who are suffering loss, the family, you know, and there's others. There, there are some others as well that we've seen pass away that are close to the church. But in the midst of all of that, our joy, our strength is in the Lord. And even in the darkest hour, God is there and he's there to lift you up and it's in his word. It's like Brad, you're holding up the Bible. You're showing us the Bible and that, and we love the word because that word is what takes us out of the, out of the trenches of our mind and our heart and get up and we continue to march on in obedience to the Lord because we love him because we know him, he knows us and he's given us his spirit. And because of him, not in our own strength, by the work of the Holy Spirit in us that he gave us, he's given us all the tools to accomplish everything that he's called us to do and to be. And I think that that is the encouragement for the today, for the times that we're living in. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Amen, brother. Well, scripture came to my mind, brother, when I was, um, you know, by, by the way, it seems like every song I sang was leading up to your thing. I, I, we, we didn't get together and, you know, um, you know, in any, any way, you know, coordinate this, right? But, but, but God, God, God coordinates this. And um, you, you said something very key that not everybody belongs to the Lord. Some are his and some are not. But <laughs> Jesus is called the door. He's called the gate. <laughs> he's, yeah, called, yeah. He, he's called the path. And in John chapter 5, verse 24, Jesus himself says, Truly, right. truly, I say to you, whoever hears my yes. word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Brother, what can a person do if they want to enter into the door of Jesus? Practically, what can they do right now that will change their whole eternity? First, need to understand that they, in their current condition, are dead. Now, that's harsh. But a person 
must come to that place to where they realize that their sin, their sin nature, their sinful lives, their sinful flesh that they live in cannot enter into righteousness. I, you know, I speak pretty plain to a lot of people, so they, they don't have to hear a lot of Christianese to decipher through. <laughs> You're not going to get into heaven on your own strength on your own good works. The word of God says that your own works are a filthy rag to the Lord. Filthy rags. They're not righteous works. The only way to eternal life, the only way to be regenerated, to be a new creature in Christ, to be saved from the righteous wrath of God is only through Jesus Christ. And what I mean is that, that we put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That we know that our sins have offended God and separate us from the love of God. But in Jesus Christ, what God did was that he sent his son to pay a price. And that was that finished work on the cross that we always talk about his death and suffering on the cross. But in that suffering, death on the cross, paid the full price of your sins, of our sins, so that we no longer have to be responsible for the payment of that price, for that still sins, our sin nature, because we don't have within ourselves the ability to do that. Only Jesus could do that. Because Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, Fully God, fully man, the son of God, without sin, the unblemished lamb. Only Jesus could fulfill that requirement. That his blood was shed for the remission of our sins, past, present, and future. So what one must do is they must repent. That old-fashioned word, repent. Amen. Repent of your sins. Recognize that you are a sinner. And that God sees you in your sin. Unless you come through that door, through that gate, Brad, that is Jesus Christ, because he is the way and the truth and the life. He is the life. There's no life outside of Jesus. So if they acknowledge Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, knowing that he died for their sins, receive him into their heart and their lives, they will be saved. And you know, the very key scripture also, and that something that you've been faithful to do tonight is share the truth of God's word. And it says um, here in Romans chapter 10, verse 4, 14, I'm sorry. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching like Pastor Phil Bruno has done tonight? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? Brother, God has sent you tonight. <laughs> As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. And that's exactly, there's a turning point. There's a the moment of decision. There's a crossroads. Not all have obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed that he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of Christ. And if you go back down yeah. to verse 9, it says, let me find that. It says, if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You know, and in my, my, in my song about the rapture called You Never Know, it's just talking to three kinds of people. The first one says, backslider. This is the first verse. Backslider, <laughs> you can make a change, you can turn around, or you can let it go. Do you want to let this offer of salvation go you know please hurry you're playing games with god and he's gonna let his judgment fall on you now we don't like judgment and you don't have to have judgment come in your life you can you can be a recipient of god's mercy you know the second right. verse says um hey sinner this person never knew god you can turn to god you can let him in or you can stay the same please hurry time is getting short all you got to do is call upon his name like we just read in um chapter 10 verse 9 and the last one says, hey, Christian, um, 
uh, I forget how it goes. Hey, Christian, you can spread his love or something like that. I, I forgot. I had the words right in front of me a minute ago. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, there's three kinds of people. There's people that have never known about God, people that have known and have walked away. Right. And there's people that God, they need to be used by God just as you were tonight to get the word out. And you know what? Yeah. Can, can we do something, brother? You know, in basketball yeah. or, or volleyball, people do kind of a setup. Like one person kind of sets it up. Another person kind of makes it go over the net. Could you pray that God will soften souls tonight of everyone listening? Yeah. And I would like to give them an opportunity to pray with me to receive Jesus in their heart. Can we do that? All right. Absolutely. Yeah. Father God, we know, Lord, that your word teaches us, Lord, that no one can come to you unless you draw them, Father. And we understand what that means, Father, that you are involved in this process, Father. As we share the gospel, that's the job you've given us to do as the church. As we share the gospel, you are working on the hearts of those that we are speaking to, Father. We don't know who, are speak, who you are drawing, but we go in obedience, Father. So I pray right now, Lord, that you would send those, Father, let them hear, those who have an ear to hear, because people are going to hear this broadcast. Father. They're going to hear this, and they're going to respond. Those who you have sent to hear, those you have given an ear to hear, Father, will hear this, Father. And then when the time comes, Father, when that invitation is given, Father, that they will respond. They will hear and they will respond. They will hear and they will respond because it's your word by which people are saved. It's not by our emotions. It's not by our fiery speech or anything like that. It's by your word, Father, that people are saved. So we pray this right now, Father, that you would already be in, at work preparing the hearts of those who will receive when Brad gives the invitation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. And yeah. if God is speaking to you and saying, you know what? You've, you've tried things in your own strength. You've tried things your own way. And why not tonight give Jesus Christ your life and tell him, Lord, I don't want to keep offending you. I, I want to be forgiven by you. I want to receive your mercy. I want to be together with you. I want to be part of the family of God. I want to go be with you forever and ever in heaven one day. You know, what you give up is, is for Christ is nothing in comparison with what you gain. You know, you're going to give up heartache. You're going to give up darkness. You're, you're going to give up addiction. You're going to give up pain. So let's just pray. If, if you want to pray, if you want Jesus in your life, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, just repeat it. Repeat these words after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I turn from my sins today and I turn to you. And ask you to forgive me. Forgive me for offending you every day with my thoughts, my words, my actions. And I ask you that you come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my all in all. Forgive me of all my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, your joy, your goodness. Everything that comes from you. Everything that you are, Lord God. Help me to be faithful to you every day, Lord God. And have a communion with you daily where I seek after you, where I seek to please you, Lord. And know that my performance will never, ever get me into heaven, but it's your grace, your love, your mercy. But yet I would have a desire and a posture of heart to want to seek after you and to want to please you every day of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you said that amen. prayer, please let us know. We would love to hear uh, so we can rejoice with you. And brother, um, I should put you back on the screen here because I have a question for you. Now, what church is it that, that you are, um, you're with, and how could people tune in, or, or if they want the fellowship, or they want the word, how, how do they get that? All right, yeah, our church is called the West LA Living Word Christian Center, and we're in the Westchester area of Los Angeles, just a few miles um, north of LAX, uh, right near downtown Westchester, beautiful downtown Westchester, and um we're right on uh, Arizona Avenue. The best way to find us was we're on so those who are in Los Angeles or in the, the Valley, um, San Fernando Valley, or even Orange County, if they want to come visit us. We're just, we're right on Sepulveda, right where the, the um, 
405 and Sentinella all come together. The address is, uh, we have a website, so that's probably the easiest way to look us up. Um, uh, the, the web address is www.lw4, the number four, u.org. And uh, we have also a live stream broadcast of our um, Sunday services. We have a Spanish service that starts at eight o'clock in the morning. And then the English service, which is going to be me preaching, it starts at 10 a.m. 10 or, or actually around 10 30 a.m. because we do worship. We don't broadcast the worship at about 10 30. We have a small church. We're a church of about 50 families and about 30 years old in the same location here. And um, we, you're welcome to look us up first online, Facebook. Um, it's um, West LA Living Word, you know, facebook.com forward slash West LA Living Word. And um, again, we have all of our videos there. You'll see a bunch of videos with me actually wearing a suit and tie. <laughs> Some people laugh at that because if they know me from my past life, there would never be a suit and tie involved. <laughs> but, um, you know, we also have our Wednesday night service that I, I teach at uh, 7.30. And that starts at 7.30 on the dot online on Facebook. And um, Friday night, we have our Spanish Bible study that starts, um, I think they started about the same time, about 7 seven thirty or eight because they do a worship in front of theirs but yes we're uh we're online um again west uh facebook.com forward slash west la living word or, and uh you can also find us on our website lw4u.org try to make